Okay, Paul here, and today on the bench, I have this antique radio. It's a Crosley, and the dial works on it. I'm just looking it over. Um, I'm going to figure out how, to, how it works, get it going, all that good stuff. This is the on-off switch, and that's the tuning, and it's AM only. Got a nice speaker design, speaker grill design. Got a little bit of flaking and peeling with the um, the skin on the wood there, and the top is just seems to be like just regular wood. Got some surface wear, very good condition for. A unit of this age other than this side where the laminate is coming off. Somebody put some scotch tape on there to kind of hold it in place. Maybe I can glue that back on. Here's the back of the unit. And got some interesting stuff going on in there with some insulation everywhere. Somebody was probably living in here interesting speaker coil and it looks like it's missing a couple tubes so got one back there so i'm seeing four tubes i'm thinking there's one missing in the back under that insulation uh, it says it's a model b36 and it has a plug with four wires actually yeah, all four wires are there. So this most likely plugged into uh, an external console of some kind. It has a speaker. Actually, it has a Crosley speaker on it. And it's wired in, so it's not a speaker jack. And it obviously there's no power cord coming out of the back. Looks like there was something, something soldered there. I don't quite understand. So we gotta figure out where the power comes in. I'll have to pull a schematic anyway, so I'll get that and order the tube for it. Um, that shield don't look like it belongs on that tube, but it's there anyway. So let's see uh, what it says on the bottom. I noticed it had a, a label on the bottom. Okay, it's upside down. Let's see, we're flipping around. I'm going to do some of this stuff one hand, and I don't want that. Um, I want the uh, laminate to come off any more than it already has. Uh, okay, so there it is. It's a battery pack. Now I understand. So this radio runs on a battery supply. It uses a 1T5GT, a 1H5GT, a 1N5GT, and a 1A7GT. So it is a four-tube set. Um, and it runs on 90 volts B and 1.5 volts A. So I'll have to get a battery pack for it, uh, uh, make another battery pack like the last one I did on the, another video. Um, I can link to that so uh, in this one so that people can go and uh, see that as well as the owner. He can go and see uh, what the power supply needs to look like for this unit. And... In the meantime, we can power it up with uh, some 9-volt batteries and a couple D batteries. So I'll be able to power it up and do a test on it. Um, I'll check those tubes and see how they are, and then we'll go from there. So the next thing is for me to get it out of the case, set the case aside so that uh, it won't get any more damage than it already is there. Um, and that can be glued down when I get to it. So there we have it. Next project to work on. Thanks for watching. I'm documenting where these wires go so I can put them back in the same place. The gray comes toward the back of the chassis. Brown goes toward the front of the chassis. And so let me pull those pins out. There's only two holes there.
freeze that up. The antenna, uh, it looks like it's not even soldered good, so I'll probably re-solder that. But it's on one screw, so I'll go ahead and take that screw out. I realize the I got the chassis upside down from you, but this is just the way I flipped it. Okay, that's disconnected. Next thing is the screws in the bottom. Okay, so we'll take these out. This radio is uh, what they call a farm radio, uh, mostly because Back in the day, not every city had electricity, and rural areas especially um, did not have electricity. And the ones that did, a lot of them had uh, DC, they didn't have AC. And so these farm radios were made because they ran on a battery, and you could uh, set them out in a farm, in a, uh, on a farmhouse, or a commercial building and uh, listen to the radio during the depression and World War uh, One, World War Two. I'm thinking this one's probably World War Two era, maybe just before it. But they could listen to the radio and get their news out in the rural areas. Okay, already got the knobs off. So we'll just slide the chassis right on. And there you have it. And you're seeing this for the first time, obviously, just like me. Seeing is uh, kind of a hard part on this. With all this insulation in here. So we'll get this out. Um, historic mouse droppings there from nobody knows how long back and I'll have to vacuum this all out of here and then on the coil uh, the tuning capacitor rather okay Okay, so there's the uh, radio out of the box, and there's the tube layout. We've got a mixer, IF, it's got one IF can, IF amp, detector, and output. Uh, actually, that's probably the rec, no, there would be no rectifier, it's a DC radio, yeah, output. And somebody had put in tape on that output tube, not a good thing because it melted, that tube gets hot. Um, there's no way I can get it off there either without maybe getting it. I'll try to clean it off. Let's look at the chassis. Okay, we had some life in here, some kind of interesting things. We're living in this case. Let's get that out of that potentiometer. Gotta watch out for these wires. I'm seeing some kind of wires in there. I don't know what that's all about, but all kinds of critter stuff in here from years gone by. Oh, see that string? I don't know what that is. I guess it's just something that they used to make a nest with. Hmm. You never know what you're going to find in there. Right. You know, when you move into a new apartment, you got to decorate the way you see fit. 
And this has all been decorated appropriately for the occupants. Now we're going to have to come out to the front. It looks like they had a hole here for a possible second IF can, but there's only one in this chassis. And um, hopefully there's not one that's been taken out. And it's possible that it runs on one IF can. I mean, that would not surprise me. Um, and it probably had the capability for two because uh, I'm not seeing a wire cap that goes to a second IF can. Okay, obviously I'll have to blow this out with my compressor to get it all out of here. But you get the idea, this is what we deal with. I should have my gloves on, but... Uh, okay, and there we have it. Okay, well, this is a Sylvania tube. This tube is a Cunningham, amazingly. That's a neat tube. And over there we have a Crosley, original Crosley tube for the um, mixer. The oscillator tube. And that's a 1A7 GT. This is a 1B, 1N5 GT. And the rectifier here, I can't see the number on it. But whatever it is, it is. And then, get that off there. Fortunately, it's not too tight on it. Oh, it is tight coming out of the bottom, though. That's one tall tube. Let's see what that is. Get the shield off. Maybe I can't get the shield off with one hand. Might have to put the phone down and spread that to get it off there. Okay, I'll be back, back in a second. Okay, and that's a 1H5 GT. So, there are our tubes. Here's the antenna coil. I like the way they did that. That is just really cool. Corrugated cardboard. The antenna loop runs through it, around it, all the way through, and it's covered in wax. So, very well made. I mean, very well made. Um, this tape used to hold that in place, but we'll fix that. It has a trimming part on it to trim it and adjust the coil. And it has a uh, separation capacitor there for uh, running an antenna. And so you could run directly in on this line, or you could run through this um, and one of these is ground. Yeah, this would be the ground here. And this would be, so it's got a capacitor from ground to um, the antenna lead. And we don't have a lot of, um, let me turn it back the other way so I don't hurt that needle. We don't have a lot of capacitors to switch out. It's got uh, one, two, three, Four, five, six, I'm seeing six capacitors that got to go and be replaced. Ah, well, I'll be, that's probably the, another IF coil, coil there mounted underneath the case. That's interesting. It could be the, no, yeah, I guess that could be the antenna oscillator trimmer coil, but, um, 
I mean, an antenna coil, yeah. Uh, got a resistor across that capacitor. Two, looks like a 2 meg, a 20 meg, 20 meg. And another resistor there, another 20 meg. And, oh, wait a minute, that's probably a 2 meg. That's green, right? Yeah, it's not blue. Two meg. Okay, and then it's got uh, another one here, uh, half watt, um, or one watt rather, those are half watts. And that one down there is a one meg, brown, black, green. And we got a couple micro capacitors, uh, which I'm sure are in good shape. We got three, one, two, three that I'm seeing. So everything looks okay. I'm sure these parts need to be cleaned. And that's the way the uh, dial string goes. It goes around just the stem and uh, around the capacitor itself. So it's directly connected to the capacitor. That'd be easy to handle. Okay, so the next thing is for me to pull up the diagram, schematic diagram, get the case cleaned out some more. I'm going to take the speaker out and set it aside so I don't have to keep the, excuse me, so I don't have to keep the big chassis case on my bench here. And we'll just stick it and drop it in a box and run some leads uh, to connect it up because the uh, output transformer is on the speaker itself. So... Well, there we have it. There's the initial look. And um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and get it set up and get it ready, find a schematic, and we'll send some DC voltage to it. And uh, see if we can get any sound out of it. So we'll be back. The speaker seems to move freely. It does have a small damage spot there that I'll repair. But uh, it seems to be moving fine. And the coil looks good on it. Uh, we'll check those coils and then uh, I'll just keep it in a box so it'll be protected while we're working and keep it away from, I don't know what, what was that? Interesting permanent magnet assembly there. It looks like it's just, this was just made in a foundry. They just melted some metal and made a block. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so we're good to go. We're going to get the uh, unit powered up. Okay, what I got going on now, um, I got my... A plus battery here connected to the circuit running directly into the um, uh, filaments of the tubes and it's working fine. I didn't have enough voltage here for um, 90 volts so I'm running a um, well, this guy here which is a 13.5 volt DC output in series with these 9 volt batteries and I'll go ahead and connect that up so you can see what that gives me on the voltmeter. Um, okay, so that'll go in there. If I can get it in there. No, wait, I can get it in this one. Same thing. Okay, so that gives me well, not giving me nothing. Am I in the right place? Yeah. Oh, on the AC scale somehow. Okay, try that again. Okay, I should go back to DC volts now. Okay, that's 66 there. Uh, that's not where I'm supposed to measure to, obviously. Yeah. Uh, still not in the right place. Yeah. There we go. So I got 85 volts going into the radio. And 
Let me make sure that that's the case. I've got so many wires running around, and I'm running it through this amp meter, this milliamp meter here, so I can see how many milliamps it's drawing. Okay, so the Y is here. Okay, there we go. So we got that going in. Um, the output transformer is bad. And that's a big problem. So we'll have to figure out what to do there. But everything else is sort of okay. Now, what I did is I connected the speaker wires directly to the cone. Skip the output transformer. And I guess you can hear that. So it is playing. The radio is playing. Now it'll probably be louder when I change the capacitors. That's full volume on a local station. Let me shut that off and disconnect all this power. Um, but the problem there is. Yeah, okay, now my power is disconnected. Everything's back to zero. Shut this off, shut this off. And bring this down and shut it off. Okay. So the next thing is to recap it. But I'm going to have to find... And apparently somebody has tried to fix this or took this out and tried to work on it, and that's probably how the speaker got damaged um, when they found out that it wasn't working, and who knows what that, what happens then. But what it is is this coil, if I um, come across it with the ohms meter here. Well, yeah, let me pause this a second. Okay, what I did is just put an alligator clip on there to hold the ground lead on the speaker. And this side, on the uh, voice coil rather, and on this side I can just touch the wires together. And I don't have to try to balance it. But if I go to ohms here. And. That's continuity. But if I go across the transformer. Nothing. Completely open. So the transformer is open. And no power is getting through to the speaker. And so that's why it's so much lower, obviously. You know, that's a... Uh, step-down transformer from high impedance to low impedance. So at a lower impedance, it would be matched to the speaker and it would play loud. Um, when I go directly across the speaker from the speaker jack here, I'm actually putting high impedance into a low impedance speaker, which is why the volume is so low. But it's also not just that. Some of these caps are bad. I know this electrolytic is definitely bad shorted probably and some of these may be taking the voltage and just shorten it out but it's not drawing a lot of extra current which is a good thing which means that um, the amplifier from antenna from the antenna lead all the way through to the amp is doing something it's actually putting out a signal it's just hard for me to know what kind of signal when i don't have a match on my speaker so what I'm going to do is try to find a temporary speaker that I can use while I'm working on it. I should have something close to the impedance on this. I did find the schematic diagram, so I do have the speaker um, set up here. And it comes off this tube, which is the 1T5, off the plate, and the screen grid goes right across the output transformer that's bad. So I can find out what this impedance is. There's, uh, from the grid, there's a capacitor and a one meg going to the plate of the previous tube here. There's a one meg resistor going down to the coil, but that really doesn't matter because it's got a one meg impedance. But here, we need to find out what the impedance of this tube is, and I'll pull that up on the tube chart. That'll tell me what kind of field coil I need uh, to match to the amplifier, to the final stage of the amp. But for right now, I'm going to just try to find find it out what it needs to be according to that tube and then find out what I got on hand.
that's close to that so I can continue testing the radio circuit itself before I worry about trying to find an exact transformer. So that's where we're at, and this radio is getting ready to be repaired. Once I get here working, then I'll create, talk to the owner about creating a uh, battery, a um, AC power supply for it, a uh, battery eliminator circuit that'll run on 112 volts, so uh, it can be powered. But that's where I'm at. This is where this video, part one, will stop, and, and I'll create another video because it's getting a little long. For part two, which will be after I recap this uh, radio. And like I said, it doesn't have a lot of caps. It's only got a few. So, you know, I'll recap it and then we'll know that all of the electrical issues are pretty much gone other than, um, you know, other than this coil. Um, also, I'll check the resistances while I'm recapping, but I'm sure they're within tolerance because the current is great. The um, uh, plate current for these tubes is, or for the whole radio actually, the B plus current is rated, let me show you down here. Okay, um, right here. The A battery drain is approximately 0.2 amps. I've been drawing about 190 milliamps, so 0.19, which is uh, actually no less than that. I take that back. I was drawing about 1.17, so I'm well within tolerance on the A battery. The B battery, the main uh, B plus, draws 11 milliamps at 90 volts. I've got just under 90 volts, 85 volts, and I'm only drawing 9 milliamps. So. The circuit is not, does not have any bad shorts. There's nothing that's drawing high current. So that's good. That indicates that uh, most everything is, is okay, you know, with these bad capacitors at this point. But once I switch them out then uh, and check the resistances, then we should be good to go. So anyway, that's where I am with part one. And you see what I did and how we troubleshooted the issue to find that the coil was bad. Of course, you know, I could have just checked it right away with the ohm meter, but I hooked it up and there was no sound, nothing coming out, not even static, nothing. Yet the current drawers were right. Very unusual to find a bad output transformer on a set that's working properly. So somebody, something happened to that coil, somehow it got hot, maybe I don't know, something happened to the coil basically and opened up the primary side. The secondary side seems to be working, you know, I can't tell for sure because it doesn't matter. When I checked across here, checked the resistance across here, I was getting a normal reading of like two, two ohms or whatever, which would be through here and through this in parallel. So I'm assuming the secondary is fine. The primary somehow is open. Doesn't look burnt or anything. It's just probably a mechanical issue. I don't know the way the wire actually got broke somewhere inside, maybe from heating and cooling in the winter and in the summer, you know, might have just had a bad spot in the wire, whatever. But anyway, that's where we are and that's how we got to this point. And uh, good news is radio is um, drawing what it's supposed to do, which means that it's in really good condition. It's not, the tubes are all good. I checked the tubes. So that's where I'm at. And uh, we'll continue from here. If you found this video informative or helpful or uh, entertaining <laughs> with all of this mess, I got <laughs> spaghetti to do it. Uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. It definitely helps me keep my uh, videos online and uh, helping other people to learn some of the basics. And so thank you for that. And uh, we will continue and I'll update this description with part two when I get to it.